Hey folks and welcome back to Ace Ideas. I'm Mask and this week I'd like to chat to you all about orientations. First things first, the big question. What is an orientation? Unfortunately, this is not something that can be easily defined. Many define a person's orientation as a description of the gender or genders they are attracted to, which is a good definition at first, but it carries with it a few problems. I'd like to unpack all those problems for you all today and maybe perhaps come up with my own definition. So first things first, how is the running definition problematic? Well, for starters, it kind of means that a whole load of super important labels cannot be considered orientations, which is crazy bad for a huge number of reasons. Suddenly, if this is your running definition of sexual orientation, so many important labels like lithsexuality, demisexuality, autocorosexuality, sapiosexuality, and many others do not qualify as orientations because they do not mention gender. Like at all. This is a bit of a problem because so many of these labels have huge significance to people and not defining them as orientations is essentially othering. Not even in the awesome I'm gonna claim what makes me different kind of way, but more so in the how dare you use my word kind of way. Which is kind of one of the crappy arguments against marriage equality and I'm kind of hoping that most of you here will agree that that's problematic. The other huge thing that makes this definition of orientations a bit of an issue is the fact that defining things by gender can be insanely difficult. Anyone who claims differently is probably forgetting a very important thing. Gender is not binary and also Gender is not just what you were assigned at birth. And along with non-binary genders and genders don't align with the assigned genders that people have, come all sorts of weird questions like, what do you call it if I'm only attracted to a certain type of non-binary person? What do you call it if I'm gender fluid and the gender I'm attracted to is sometimes the same as mine, but sometimes isn't? What if I don't know what gender I am and I'm confused by all these notions of same and other. All of the above could make it potentially hard to identify one's orientation through genders alone. Especially since a lot of the accepted orientation labels are incredibly binary. <sighs> Alongside this are the problems that arise when you consider the asexual spectrum. I only experience attraction to someone after forming a strong emotional bond. Shouldn't I be talking about that? If I've only ever been attracted to one person, does that make me their gender sexual or just them sexual? And it's because of all these things that defining orientation solely on the basis of gender isn't the best thing to do. So what's the solution? Well, my personal feels dictate that we need a more inclusive description of orientation, not one that just works from a basis of gender. So with that in mind, I propose this. That orientation isn't just about the genders one's attracted to, but rather the circumstances in which someone experiences attraction or relates to attraction. The circumstances in which one experiences attraction could be related to gender, or they could have to do with someone's intelligence, or whether you have an emotional bond. Or you could have certain qualities about the way you experience attraction that are very important to you to express, like not wanting reciprocation, or feeling a disconnect between yourself and the object of your sexual arousal. With this definition of orientation, it's really up to the individual person to decide what labels they feel they need to best describe themselves. And no one is making judgments about what people can or can't define their orientations as. Like, in my instance, I could fit the definition of autocarosexual, but I don't feel that that's a distinction I need to make, so I'm not going to label myself as such. But I 100% understand those people out there who feel they do need to. So what kind of person would I be if I went up to those people and said, your label is not a real orientation? I'm happy calling myself great romantic without a distinction of gender because I feel like in my case, I was more attracted to that one person than their gender. But I also acknowledge that it's completely fine to say call yourself grey homo romantic or grey pan romantic or grey scolia romantic. 
that's entirely up to you. So essentially, whatever you feel you need to self-describe as, go for it. Be yourself and don't let anyone tell you you are wrong. Because really, no one knows you better than yourself. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that jazz for more awesome asexy vlogs in the future. Just a quick reminder that everything I've said in this vlog today, or any of my videos in general, is my own personal experiences, thoughts, feelings, etc. And in no way reflects the opinions of the asexual community as a whole or even just the others on this channel. I may not even agree with the things I'm saying today in the future. So, <laughs> don't take anything I say as law. Anyway, thanks again for watching. Sorry for not posting for so long. I've just been trying to survive drama school, essentially. Anyone who tells you that this is easy is either lying or seriously missing the point. <laughs> thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!